Welcome to Electrical Engineering with Excel. In this short video, we will make a peak detector on an Excel chart. Often, when analyzing data from a measurement instrument, it's useful to know the maximum value of the data. In this case, the marker depicts the resonant frequency of a second order control system with a moderately high Q. As a start, I have a very simple data series. With any cell in the series selected, make it a table by pressing Ctrl T. It recognizes the headers, so click OK. Then from the Insert menu, select the scattergram chart with straight lines. Now I'll add a column with the header name Peak to create the maximum value of the amplitudes to be displayed in the chart as a single data point. I'll use the if function where if the value to the left is equal to the max value of the entire column, we want to return that value. Otherwise, return a blank. That works, but the chart plots the blanks as zero values, which is not what we want. Right click on the chart and select data and click the hidden and empty cells button. You can see that by default, it shows any cells with the NA error as an empty cell. The NA error means not available, and it's Excel's way of telling you that you've entered in something that Excel can identify or find, or that you've misspelled something in your formula. I'll replace the blank with the NA function, which returns the NA error, if not the max. Now the zeros go away, but that single data point at 25 is obfuscated by the straight line series. Select the data series, click right, and select Change Series Chart Type. Then change the series type, or the peak series, to Scatter. Select the peak data point and right click and select Format Data Series. Click on the Fill button, then select Marker and Marker Options. I'm selecting a built-in plus sign marker. And increase its size to 8 points and change its color in red to make it stand out. Then right-click and select Data Callouts. That will display the X and Y values. Now I'll paste in some data using Control Alt V for Paste Special and select values and tweak the chart a bit. Format the horizontal axis and select logarithmic scale. Then format the vertical axis and make the horizontal axis cross the vertical axis at a large negative number, so it will always be on the bottom. Now I'll select the data series, right click and select change series chart type, then select the amplitude series to be scattered with straight lines. Selecting the frequency data set and formatting the cells, I'll paste in a frequency number format for the frequencies that we developed in the formatting frequency numbers with SI prefixes video. In this case, displaying two decimal places, it makes the frequency in the callout more readable. I'll make the chart bigger, but I want the horizontal axis to display no decimal places. Select Format Axis and change the number format to display only whole numbers. and then add it. I want the marker to stand out more, so I'll format the data point marker and increase the size up to 13. That looks better, 
I'll also increase the border width to 1.75 points. Now let's format the data callout to the style from the theme styles already in Excel to improve its looks. And move it to the side. Okay, let's soup it up a bit and add minor grid lines to the horizontal axis and the vertical axis as well. Then click the plus sign and add axis titles. With the vertical title selected, click inside the formula bar and type an equals sign and select the amplitude header. And then do the same with the horizontal frequency axis. That way it will be dynamic. I'll update the header cell to add hertz and the amplitude cell to add dB. Finally, from the Table Design tab, turn off the filter button, which we don't need. Now you can save this workbook and paste special values for new frequency amplitude pairs from future measurements. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.